Hey, Pittsburgh. There are some incredibly creative people around our city, and we're here to meet them, learn what they do, and how they create. I'm Alan Fear, and this is the Pittsburgh Creators Podcast. Welcome back to the Pittsburgh Creators Podcast. I'm Alan Veard, and I am here today with a very special guest, Karina Dendashi. Really excited to have you in the studio today. Uh, for our listeners who may not um, be familiar with your work, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Sure. And thank you so much, Alan, for inviting me yeah. as well. Yeah. So I am a writer, I'm a director, and I also act in some of my work. Um, and I'm a Pittsburgh native. I was born and raised here in Pittsburgh. Oh, cool. Um, but I'm now based in Brooklyn, so that's where I do a lot of my film work. Oh, gotcha. Mm -hmm. So, um, in what part of Pittsburgh are you from? So, I was born, I mean, I, I sort of grew up in Squirrel Hill, yeah. mostly, yeah, for I most gotcha. of my life. Now, uh, we live in Fox Chapel. Oh, okay. But most of it, I think I've lived in Squirrel Hill. Yeah, no, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was your experience kind of getting into the industry, and like, what was that process like for you? Sure, yeah. So, I went to high school at Ellis, the Ellis School in Shadyside. Okay. And there I did an apprenticeship, actually, at the Pittsburgh Filmmakers. Oh, okay. Um, and on top of that, I also did one of their summer camps. And I think I always knew that I loved storytelling, specifically yeah. writing, creative writing. Yeah. And I've always been interested in film. But as you said, it's very hard to know where to start, right. yeah, how to get into it. That's my biggest question is it, mm -hmm. it seems like it's a, it's a field that a lot of people are interested in, but to actually take that first step. Right. So I think the first step, probably started in high school when I did these programs at the Pittsburgh Filmmakers. Um, and I think that's when I knew that I loved the craft itself yeah. and the process of filmmaking and how collaborative it was. And after that, I ended up going to NYU for college. Um, starting sophomore year, I took a gap year. And at NYU, I, I think it was also a battle within myself, just knowing what would be sustainable for me as a career right. and feeling that film wasn't something that could give me that... Uh, sustainability and financial security. Yeah, so yeah. I think I started out wanting to study journalism and going down that route because that was also creative. That was also writing. Right. But during my time at NYU, I participated in a lot of internships mm -hmm. in film, specifically independent film, uh, starting with Killer Films. I interned at Topic Studios uh, and then at A24 and through all of these internships, that's when it kind of confirmed to me that I needed to be in this world, whether right, in right. development or production. And yeah, I ended up just going for it. I, I met a producer that was actually in the NYU Tisch film and TV program okay. um, through my internship, one of my internships. And she was really the one I leaned on to make that first short film because I knew nothing technical at all about filmmaking. I didn't know what right. it looked like, how to do it. Uh -huh. So I think I kind of just threw myself in there and with her help and leaning on her, yeah. that's where I really just got started just by doing it. The the thing about film that I always find fascinating is there are technical sides of it. There's the actual <laughs> filming part of it and then there's everything else and there's the creative aspect of it in terms of screenwriting. Right. Um, and you, it sounds like you've done a, a little bit of everything. Like, mm -hmm. Was there like specific points in your career at this point where you felt like, oh, I have to transition to this or I have to like experience this more or was it kind of like kind of a gestalt where you kind of take it all in at the same time and like, okay, I'm going to take a little bit here and a little bit here, and then I'm going to try to drive forward with, you know, some screenwriting. Or was there a specific path that you kind of like envisioned before you started? Yeah. I mean, during my internships, I did, I was definitely in the office. I did development work mostly. Yeah. For A24, I worked specifically for their development department, which is reading scripts, doing coverage on scripts. Um, that was a main bulk of my responsibility there. And I think for a while I thought I wanted to be in development and yeah. work for independent production companies doing that. Um, but I think as I tried different things, as I made my first short film and I felt what that was like, I right. think that's when I realized, oh, no, I don't want to be the one saying this script, that script. Yes, no, I want to be the one making the content, right, doing the right. writing, mm -hmm. doing that kind of work. And I also I was an executive assistant to a producer as well. Mm -hmm. Um, after I graduated just to make money while I was making my films on the side yeah, yeah, yeah. and to support myself in a day job. And um, it was there that I think I also realized, hey, I've never had production experience. I've always been in the office. I've always been the one sort of, you know, doing the admin work or right. doing certain things that had me just seated all day. And I right. think after that job specifically is when I decided I wanted to pivot into production work. So that led me 
to do a bunch of different production assistant jobs. So I was working on different films like After Yang. Um, I worked on um, Morbius. Um, I worked on, yeah, A Woman in the Window. Just a bunch uh-huh. of different feature films. Um, and just I just wanted to know what that looked like, right, just being on right. big films like that yeah, and yeah. how that operated. Uh-huh. And that was just another part of me trying to educate myself on all different sides of the industry. Is, is there an element... Uh, no matter the size of the production of like being kind of starstruck, just like I'm in this moment is it, I can imagine that it's kind of like at first I'm sure it's overwhelming and I'm sure at this mm-hmm. point you're probably like, Oh, it's just old hat. But. I mean, I think I've always been, it's just so thrilling to be yeah. on set. Even if you're yeah, just right, a right, PA right. running to get snacks for me, it's always been so thrilling. And I think for my first, my first job as a PA was very special to me just because it was a smaller indie. It was for A24. Right. It had a lot of, you know, cool celebrities, like people being right, cast right. in these major roles uh-huh. that I've seen in other things. And I think that was, that was my favorite um, project that I've, I was a production assistant on. I made a lot of friendships and everyone in the department was so open, so kind. The director, Koganato was so kind. And I think I just learned a lot on that set and, I don't know. I think I think I'll always find it thrilling to be on set. Right. Regardless, I, I can imagine that's part of the allure of it too. It's like yes, yeah, just having this experience. So you have an idea. Mm-hmm. Um, you have a script or something. What What does that process look like just to like get something created? Like I I couldn't even imagine where to start with that. Yeah, it's hard to know where to start. And I think just through the small steps that I kept taking, I learned yeah. more and more. And I think I came to a point where it was after my first short that I realized that I really do need help. I need help right. in terms of hey, maybe I should learn more about this before I make another film. There's obviously a lot of gaps in my education. And also just financially, like I said, I was taking a job to support myself, but it was a very demanding job. So I just didn't have a lot of time for myself um, to create, which was also a problem. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think I started to do some research and I got some advice um, from my now producer, Aya Hamdan. She told me about a fellowship called uh, Creative Culture at the Jacob Burns Film Center. And I looked into that fellowship, and it's essentially grad sc- film grad school for people who can't pay for it. Oh, gotcha, um, gotcha. You know, because it is expensive to go to grad school, and right. I didn't necessarily want to do all that. Yeah. I thought that that was a lot. And I also mm-hmm. thought that the best way to learn about film and to be a director and a writer is to just do it and just to keep doing it and to work with people. And that's what the fellowship was for. It was for just a community of filmmakers to come together, write the script, go through everything from – you know, pre-production to post within a community with mentors um, and they give you resources, they give you a stipend. So that right. sounded exactly what I needed at that point in time to keep me keep me moving forward. Right. It yeah. seems like it's 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 kind of like a, a good cauldron to like <laughs> create the oh, yeah. <laughs> to create a recipe for, you know, it oh, gives yeah. you all the experiences. You said before, like you you had a full time job, you were trying to, to figure this out, how you could be creative. Mm-hmm. Um, do you find that that it makes it more of a job or do you are there ways that you kind of continue to spark your creativity or like find inspiration to keep going with it? You know? Yeah, I mean, I definitely I'm still learning and yeah, I keep oh, learning yeah, with right. every project I make and Every time I see a new film, I think, wow, what a great scene. I would love to, you know, maybe that sparks something. And that makes me think about, you know, a certain shot in a different way that I could use maybe in my own work or Mm -hmm. something like that. Um, But, yeah, I definitely think I I still have a day job right now. So I'm not able to totally be freelance and be creative. So Mm -hmm. I have a day job working at a nonprofit um, film organization. But I think that's something that's hard. It's balancing just the day job to keep myself financially stable. But whenever I do have free time, it is all put towards, you know, the film stuff, which is exciting. You know, I go to a coffee shop, I get inspired, I'm constantly watching films, I'm constantly going to film festivals and watching other people's work and seeing what's out there. Um, So yeah, I think I've, you know, obviously you get burnt out once in a while. And when you do that, I kind of just step back and I take a break and Mm -hmm. I let it come back to me. Um, But something I've also learned is that I think in the beginning, I thought that being a good creative is, you know almost like feeling manic and putting all these awesome ideas together and just getting it all out there at a coffee shop or something. But then I started to realize, no, if you want this to be your job, you kind of have to show up every day and be consistent and do something every day, whether, whether it's sending an email or whether it's, Uh you know, something related to your film work. And it doesn't have to be this crazy fun mania of creativity every single time you work on your film stuff. So that was something I think I had to learn. And I'm like, no, treat this like a job. You need to be consistent and you need yeah. to do something every yeah, day. It's, it's, 
it, and I keep saying this, it's interesting, at least interesting to me, that one of the throughputs through all of the people that I've interviewed in the creative field mm-hmm. um, has been that whole idea of like you have to do it and it's a daily thing mm-hmm. and that there is a certain amount of energy that it takes to do that. Um, yeah. As far as like the manic kind of like, I got to get this down. <laughs> Um, what does what your organizational scheme look like? Yeah, so I think I do a couple different things. I think one thing I always love doing, it's just very basic, I love opening Google Docs and just yeah. writing scenes down almost like they're short stories. Uh-huh. Just because sometimes it's hard, you get distracted by the format of a screenplay. Right. Interior, exterior, this, that. And it's, I just like Google Docs because they're just free reign. You can just write right. silly piece of dialogue down or just silly ideas down um, that you're thinking about. And I also love, I don't know if you've heard of Shot Deck, but it's Shot essentially... Deck, yeah. It's it's like Pinterest, but for cinematographers and oh, directors. Okay. Um, and it's really cool. You can filter it based on, you know, interior, exteriors. You can filter it based on how many people are in the frame of a shot. You can filter it on color grading, on day and night. Like, there's just so many different things. If you're looking for a shot with a balloon in it, you can type in the search balloon, and then it'll show you all these films wow. with all these shots of balloons. That's really um, cool. So it's a really cool place to just get inspiration. I love putting them on Google Slides just to maybe give myself a visual of like a scene or a character um, because it's also inspiring to look at actual images from somewhere. Yeah, for Um, sure. I'm sure. So I think that's something that also inspires me. How do you bridge that gap between the intellectual part of screenwriting? Like, I know I have to do this and Mm. I have this arc versus, um, you know, what you want to see or what you want it to look or feel like even. That's a really good question, actually, because I think, I think it's something something about structure is something I'm still learning about. Right. Um, I was recently part of a film lab uh, called Film Independent Screenwriting Lab, and I think there I learned a lot about structure yeah, yeah. Um, and a lot about good storytelling and like what characters need and like how they attain it and ex- internal you know goals versus external goals. So I think that is something I'm still learning about right, because right. I don't have that background of formal screenwriting. Yeah. Um, But I always think I start out creatively with even just one scene that I'm, like, super, super excited about. I always Mm -hmm. have a couple scenes that I know is going to be in the film, that I know without a doubt that I love the scene so much. And in a a lot of ways, those scenes are usually the core of the film. Or they touch something that is very important to me to say in the film. Mm -hmm. So I think usually building around those very, very important scenes just sort of, you know, molds the story in a way that has a balance. Because usually those scenes that I'm excited about are interesting in a visual way. Like they say something big visually. So usually building out a story around that, you know, works out for me in terms of balancing what the story needs. But what I want it to look like and what I want it to feel like and what emotionally I want to be shown on the screen. Uh Um, But it's a good question. It's something that I continuously try to figure out as I'm writing, as I'm looking at the images. I'm sure Um, it's one of those big questions that everyone always has because that's like the whole thing, right? Is like being able to like make a consistent, cohesive narrative visually as well as – yeah. As with your storytelling. Yeah. So uh, tell us a little bit about Cousins, because that was the one the one that kind of kept popping up when I was doing a little bit of research for this. Yeah, Cousins was my last short film that I've made so far. Uh, it was also part of the Creative Culture Fellowship. Uh-huh. So it was my last film with them that I've made. Um, and I made it with my producer, Aya Hamdan. And Cousins is essentially about uh, two cousins who were born in separate countries, but they uh-huh. reunite after a yeah. long time of seeing each other. Um, and one of the cousins is uh, Arab American. The other cousin was born in Lebanon. Uh-huh. So they're coming with different cultural backgrounds. And um, they spend the night just hanging out uh, when an ex comes in and basically turns the night even more chaotic into a mission mission of revenge of sorts. <laughs> oh. um, so it is a dark comedy, gotcha. which is something that I haven't done before uh-huh. and which I really, really love doing because um, it takes similar themes that I've done in my other shorts, which are identity, being Arab, being Arab American, sort of, you know, being in diaspora as well. Yeah. Um, and But it sort of flips it on its head and it just, you know, uh-huh. it's it's a different lens, like using comedy to bring levity, levity to certain subjects. Um, so yeah, so I, I really enjoyed the process of making that film. The film has done very well. We premiered a lot of Oscar qualifying film festivals um, yeah. over the past year. Uh, we were on, featured on The Wrap. Um, and also we're going to be on The New Yorker in the fall. Oh, so, excellent. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. Thank you. So what what um, attracts you to Pittsburgh, like specifically as like a setting or or I mean, just from your own personal experience, what what what's 
unique or what's special about Pittsburgh? Yeah, I can. It's so funny. I have this conversation with so many people, even in the festival circuit. People yeah. love Pittsburgh. Yeah, a lot it, of filmmakers love Pittsburgh. There are so many references. Like, yeah. it, it, television shows everywhere. It's like even in the background, on, you always see like Pittsburgh postcards. It's it's really fascinating. Yeah, yeah. What I is mean, it I about think, Pittsburgh? Well, I think there's two aspects of Pittsburgh. One that's emotional and one that's like financial because Pittsburgh looks like a lot of, yeah. I don't know, book descriptions or mm-hmm. like small city, but not right, that right, small, right, right. like something like that. Like it's very nostalgic, I yeah. think, as a background and yeah. it could blur as a lot of different cities maybe to people right. perhaps that don't know it very well. It's kind of anonymous in uh, terms yeah. of like just the downtown and the actual like... Yeah, I and it's see that. and it's cheap too. It's affordable right, to right, shoot here. Right. Um, so there's a lot of different reasons on that end. But I think emotionally, I think because it's also been part of so many coming of age right. films, for example, like yeah. something like Perks of Being a Wallflower, yeah, Me Earl and the Dying Girl, right, right, also. Right. Um, but I think there is something textural about the city uh-huh. in a way that's yeah. very beautiful, that's very nostalgic, um, that I personally gravitate towards. Besides the fact that I came of age here and the story I'm making is a coming of age right. story. So in terms of like daily habits or is mm-hmm. there anything that you do personally to continue being creative? Like what are some things just in terms of like self care that you do to really kind of um, create healthy habits for yourself to continue? Or Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I think I'm also trying to figure that out, but I right, think right. one of my main things is balance just because yeah. I think sometimes when you're working towards something, you uh-huh. kind of just want to get it done. You, you don't want to rest or you don't want to whatever until you complete it. Um, But with film, it's just such an ongoing process. Even if you're done with production, there's post. Even if you're done with post, you're trying to get into the festival circuit. Even if you're you're doing press, you're doing this, you're doing that. Mm -hmm. So there's just like, it's never ending, I realized. And it requires a kind of stamina to sort of just ride with the waves and the ups and the downs. Um, And I think I just try to just have an, a healthy lifestyle, just right. exercising helps my mental health. Um, taking breaks helps a lot. So even though I try to be consistent, if I'm realizing that I'm burnt out, right. I definitely step away. I try to focus more on other areas of my mm-hmm. life. Um, and really, that's that's all I've been doing at this point. It's, it's, it's definitely hard to navigate, but I think taking breaks is a big one. What are some um, things that you could offer to people, not only um, getting into the film industry, mm-hmm. um, but just in terms of just in general creativity? What are what what's some parting words that maybe you have or some, you know, just words of inspiration that that might be out there um, to uh, help the next inspiring artist in any form? Yeah, I would definitely say um get out there and just look for even local sets or local anything that you can be part of, even yeah. if you're not in college and maybe you don't have the opportunities to have an internship in a big city or anything like that um, because those are great too but I think you can find anything on a local level Mm -hmm. even with your school I know Steeltown is something here in Pittsburgh that um, has a lot of opportunities to either do camps or be a PA so that's something to look into Steeltown at WQED Um, so I think there are a lot of opportunities and I think through that that'll open the next door and that'll open the next door so you just need one thing to sort of step on like one stepping stone and that's kind of what I did. I didn't know anything at all. Right. And then you do one little thing, you learn a little bit, and then you keep learning more, and it opens mm-hmm. bigger, bigger doors. Um, that's really the only way to do it. Um, there's no way to know everything then hop into right. something. You kind of just have to find that one opportunity, um, and you have to look for it. As far as keeping up with all the goings-on, um, Instagram, Facebook, uh, TikToks? <laughs> yeah. No, my Instagram is uh, at Karina Dandashi. My producer also, um, she has a production company called 10 Mills Productions, 10 Mills M-I-L-S. So she's also on Instagram and she has a website, 10millsproductions.com. So you can follow all my work there. And I also have a website, karinadandashi.com. Excellent. We'll make sure we'll put it in the description. It was absolutely great talking to you. Thank you so much. And thank you to all of our listeners for your continued support. And till next time, this is the Pittsburgh Creators Podcast. is supported by the Pittsburgh Creators Project. You can learn more at www.pittsburghcreators.org. If you know a creator we should speak to, let us know by contacting us through our website. The podcast is produced and theme composed by Robert Traw. 
Thanks to Red Cayman Studios here in Pittsburgh. All episodes were recorded and edited at Red Cayman. I'm Alan Fear, and this is the Pittsburgh Creators Podcast. We'll see you next time.